Hey guys, Kakarot1970 again, this time with a review of the high-grade aerial rebuild provided to me by Hoveling Japan. Links to buy your own down below. And in terms of looks, the rebuild definitely has people talking. Although from what I've been able to see, it's mostly people saying that they prefer the original. And truth be told, I do agree that the art of the aerial rebuild lacks a certain je ne sais quoi that the original aerial did have. But it wouldn't be the first time that a Gumpla makes people like a mobile suit more than the actual art does. And the rebuild's Gumpla was definitely able to do that for me. The head is absolutely phenomenal and clearly where a lot of the budget went. Not only are the Vulcan guns molded in grey, but even this tiny line next to the chin is molded, as well as the bridge of the quote unquote nose and the eyes, which come with individual metallic stickers in either green or red for a nicer shine. And we've also got a matching back camera sticker. And the gunned arm system on the V-fin is passable enough with either an active or no sticker. But talking about the stickers, this sticker sheet isn't exactly something you want to see on a modern Gunpla. And while many of the stickers are understandable, the fight for the gunned bits, not so much. So quickly moving on with the rest. We've got the stickers for the head we just talked about, two metallic green ones from the stomach, black and green ones from the shoulders, two green ones for the knees, these stickers on the outside of the beam rifle and these on the inside of the beam rifle, and then finally we get the stickers of the gunned arm system. And just like the rebuilt is an upgrade of the original aerial, this application of the gunned arm system stickers can also be considered an upgrade. On the original, the design was on the sticky side of the sticker, which then had to be stuck to the clear part. Which is kind of the opposite of what you would expect, but on the rebuild, you can thankfully now just apply them to the plastic underneath. And this not only makes our builder lives much easier, but they now also cover the bottom part of the shell unit, something that wasn't the case in the original and just ignore this little white portion that isn't covered. And talking about the shell unit, for the top we of course get the choice between a translucent piece or an in-molded piece that looks extremely vibrant and is the obvious choice if you're going for an active gunned arm system. And with all of these stickers applied, the only thing left to paint is grey for the back of the feet, the bottom of the feet, and the back of some of the gun bits, and black for some holes here and there. And the seam lines and the hollow parts are also... mostly good news. I did feel that this kit had a few more visible seam lines than usual, and this one on the arm is standing out especially bad. No matter how much I pushed it, I just couldn't get it to close. So straight out of the box, the aerial rebuild will look great from afar, especially with the gunned arm system stealing your attention, but for perfection, you might want to consider doing some painting. And now let's have a look at the accessories. Mounted on the optional flight unit, we get two beam savers with two correctly colored blue beam saver blade effect parts, and then we immediately go to one of the rebuild's signature items, the new beam rifle. A very chonky boy that is unfortunately a bit too chonky for my rebuild to handle. It doesn't have any trouble holding it up at the moment, but it will sag to the side. So let's bring in the escutcheon, which can transform this bad boy from a regular beam rifle into a gunned bit rifle. But first, as a shield. It is very straightforward, it's got a peg and can go into either the left or right forearm. Or the shoulder if you're feeling adventurous. To combine it with the beam rifle then, you rip it apart, throw away this leftover piece, parts form the beam rifle with its extended parts and folded out handles, and put the bits on it for maximum firepower. And if you prefer, you can also use this double-handed mode without the gun bits 
or go completely crazy and use it with only a single hand. But what surprised me the most is that even with both hands on the beam rifle, I was able to get more dynamic poses than I was expecting. And if you choose not to use the gun bits on the rifle, you can also hook them up to the rebuild itself for even higher performance. I especially like how they look on the backpack. And if you decide not to use the beam rifle, you can store that on the backpack. A feature that I always appreciate. And finally, here's a fun tidbit from the manual. The flight unit is described as optional equipment. So it's totally official to have the rebuild without its backpack or with a different backpack, like the Mirasol or that of the Demi Trainer. And the Mirasol flight unit also comes with open hands, something that this kit unfortunately doesn't come with. But on to the articulation now. The head is on the usual double ball joints, allowing it to go up and down really nicely, as well as rotate around all the way. Then we get another double ball joint in the shoulders for some nice forwards, backwards and upwards movement as well. The arms can go up all the way thanks to the moving shoulder armor, they'll rotate around, bend at the elbow on only a single joint, but at least it is a pretty nice bend. Then the hands are on ball joints, will wiggle around, turn around and do everything a ball joint does. But try not to use him too much or, you know, he might not be able to use his giant rifle anymore, at least not with one hand. Then we get another ball joint in the waist and despite that being a single ball joint, we do... And apparently, once you hear the click, that means you went too far and you have to carefully push it back in. So what I was going to say is that despite being a single ball joint, it does give you some nice articulation, but just be careful to not move it forward too much or you have to carefully put it back in place. Then we also have a swivel joint for the rotation. Then the front skirts are on ball joints. They can be separated, but I decided not to do that with the aerial rebuild. The legs can go forwards pretty nicely like that. Backwards almost just as nicely. They're just getting hindered by the thickness of the thighs. And then outwards all the way like that. And this piece of side skirt armor can also go up and down. Then we've got a double knee joint, something that we can no longer take for granted with the Witch from Mercury line. And then the feet have some nice articulation as well, but you do have to be a bit careful with them. They go forwards and backwards very nicely, but with the backwards movement, you can potentially dislocate the thing and stretch out the C-clip at the bottom, so watch out for that. We have some ankle armor that's on its own little ball joint that can go up and down and also rotate around a little bit. But what cannot rotate around is the foot itself. We do get a toe joint for some upwards, downwards and rotation. And this can go a little bit side to side because it is on a ball joint. And then the heel is on a simple swivel joint. And then finally we have the backpack. Now this has some pretty nice articulation. We have a swivel at the base of the wingtips, we'll call them. They can go up and down and they can also rotate around at the top. And then these claw-like thingies can also go all the way in and out. I absolutely love them. And they also have like a little peg sticking out so it's very easy to pull them out once you have them in there. The only kind of disappointing thing is that these bottom thruster things look like they would be very well articulated, but they are just on an angled peg, so they just go up and down. I really would have expected them to be on ball joints. So overall, while the backpack could have been just that little bit better, the rebuild is nonetheless a very articulated Gumpla and shouldn't have any trouble taking on just about any pose you can imagine. The only thing that'll actually limit its articulation is the beam rifle in twin handed mode. So as always, the inevitable question is, do you want to buy this? And despite missing the mark on a few small details, 
the rebuild is still overall a solid Gumpla. The detailing on the head is amazing, I love the backpack, and it has some extra play value added thanks to the beam rifle and the gun bits. The design certainly isn't for everyone, but if you're on defense about it, then this might just be the push you need to start liking it. So for some size comparisons, first up here it is next to its predecessors, the original Lefrith and the vanilla Ariel. It's definitely interesting to see just how different these three are in both looks and vibe. Then here it is next to the two other famous machines used by the Earth House, Choo Choo's Demi Trainer and the Farocht, at least later on. And then finally, here it is next to the standard sized Jim Custom and the always bulky Zaku 3. And as you can see, thanks to its backpack, the rebuild is able to demand quite some presence. But that has been all for this review of this upgraded aerial. If you want your own, links down below. As always, a big thank you to the Patreon supporters, I hope everyone watching has a great day, and I'll see you all next time.